All right, so let's start with our hands on top of our heads and our feet together. Excellent. And begin with rolling body weight. Perfect. Awesome. So start by just rotating the body weight around the feet. Side of foot, front of foot, other side and back. When this roll feels comfy, start imagining there's a rope on your hip pulling as you roll around. So that rope is guiding you as you turn the spine. Good, about 20 each side. Okay. Should have counted. You're about six. Sorry, everybody. No worries. <laughs> Good, and as your body opens up more and more, you can increase the size of the circle, and the top of the body will act as a counterbalance. Five more. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Plenty. Good. And we start the other side, same thing. Begin with just rocking your body weight around your feet. Front of foot, side of foot, back and other side. Work on that coordination first. Once the coordination feels good, start imagining that rope pulling from your hips, right in the belt line, drawing you around to the other side. Good, gradually increasing the size of the circle as your hips relax and make space. Five more. We need to get you some just big lights. I know, just some light in this room. And 20. Should do the second one? Okay. Anybody? Good. So, with the feet a little wider, drawing the belly button towards the spine and keeping the back straight, pivot from the hips and roll the chest down and then up. Good. Keeping the back straight the whole time. At five, you bring the hands in the chest. Okay. Five. Good. Then bringing the hands, if you can, to the center of the chest to increase the weight that you're lifting from your hips. Try, in general, to keep the weight closer to the front of the foot than the back. And then behind the ears. Same thing with the hands behind the ears. Make sure you're lifting just from your hips, keeping the back straight the whole time. If you can't sink all the way down to parallel with the ground, that's all right. Just make sure the spine is straight as you lift up. This is 19. Great. And one more. Excellent. Bringing the hands to the hips in the same stance. Same lean forward, belly draw back straight. And then as you lift, turn and look at the ceiling or sky, depending on where you are. Mm -hmm. Good. And continue. And just 10 of these. Each side? Total. And one more. All right. Good. Narrowing the stance, the feet just slightly wider than shoulder width, drawing the belly to the back, sinking. And as you lift, bringing the shoulders back and the elbows behind that center line and drawing down. Good. Keeping the back straight as you arc forward, pushing into the ground as you lift, pushing into the ground as you sink. Very nice. If your legs aren't quite strong enough to go all the way down to full squat, that's okay. 
Just make sure your back is straight and you're sinking down as deep as you comfortably can. Every ten. Cool. You're going to be the last two. Okay. Two more. Nine and ten. Excellent. So from here, going into your wider stance. As Rachel leans forward, <laughs> you do the, the carpet teaser. There, okay. there you go. Make sure your back is straight. You want your weight a little bit forward and your knees slightly bent. As she rolls, she's going to turn and look past her foot, stretching just a little with her back straight. And then nice and slower, slower. Back across to reach. Good. Nice and slow. Slow turn. Feel the hips rotate. Feel the back pull as you stretch. Good. And 10 of those in total. Good. Looking past your ankle as you turn. Take your time on the rotation. And again, make sure your spine is straight the whole time. Nice twist, April. Two more. Excellent. Narrowing the stance to just a bit beyond shoulder width. We're going to the same basic motion as the first exercise. So begin with rolling your weight all the way around your base, front, side, back to side. Again, the goal of this exercise, first and foremost, is that coordination to be rounding your feet. From here, once you feel comfortable and freeze, and her hip goes back, that creates space for the body to swoop through. There you go. But notice that even as she's swooping, the foot pattern is the same. She's still rocking all the way around her feet. About 15 more. I think I've noticed in the last two. Okay. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. There you go. If you lose that coordination in your feet and with your balance, you can stop the swoop for a few rolls and just kind of find that revolution again up high and then go right back into that swoop once you feel that foot coordination is back. Two more. Awesome. So changing sides, same thing. Start with rolling that weight around your feet. Once that roll feels good, you can start with the swoop. Before you go into that, as you make space, notice how there's still a slight bend in her knee. She's never gonna lock out her joints as she rolls. There's always gonna be a little bit of space to make sure protecting the joints as you swoop as you swoop through. Two more, 14, 15. Excellent. We go to rotation of the leg around the base, single leg first, working in our figure eights. So starting on would be all of your left leg, rolling the hip around the ankle. We'll slow it again on external rotation. Paying attention to the opening and closing of the hip in each circle. Good, as you get comfortable, sit down just a little bit, like your butt sitting on a very high stool. There you go. Very nice, try to feel that articulation and movement in the quad. Again, that quad is that inguinal space between abdomen and leg, that diagonal line. Good, and just to warm up, switch to the other leg. 
Again, for these first few seconds, just pay attention to that roll, initiating from your hip, pivoting around your ankle. The knee is not leading the movement. If you, if you lead from the knee, you're gonna strain the knee. The knee is just acting like a hinge. Just that bridge between the movement from the hip and the pivoting points in the ankle. From here, start working into your figure eights. One hip rolling into the next. Good, making sure each circle is complete, taking your time in that weight transfer. Roll, pull to the other leg, roll, pull to the other leg, good. And from there, start adding in those base postural elements, starting with that grab with the feet. Remember, it's not a death lock, it's just a very slight engagement between the big toe, the second toe, and the heel, and the arch of the foot, grabbing in just enough that you can feel the musculature of that lower leg begin to engage around that grab of the toes and heel. From there, you can begin to play with pulling from one leg into the next, pulling into the full leg, pulling into the other leg as it falls, foot as it fills, drawing back and forth. Good. Next, drawing the belly to the spine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you freeze your second, Rachel, as you sink down, there's that fold in the hips, there's the belly draw to the back. There you go, let the tailbone just drop and relax down. There, and now roll. Feel the difference? Yeah. It's like you're sitting on a very high office chair with rollers in the bottom, and you're just rolling the chair around each sits bone. Feels like it moved out of my knees. Exactly, the more you move from the belly, the more you engage the stomach and get into the quad, the less you're gonna need your knees to take up slack. And for longevity of practice, anything you can do to take pressure off your knees is a very good idea. Good, again, if you look at Rachel, I think it's a little hard to see with the dark room and the dark clothes, but there's a little bit of a fold right here at the quad as she's pulling side to side. Nextly on our list, we're gonna knit the clavicles. And if you, if you have mutual shoulders, the shoulders are here. All we're doing is splaying the scapula and back as the front draws in just a little. It's not a hard pinch or a hard fold. It's like a hand gently pressing on the chest making a bow-like structure through her back. And there's an elasticity in that bow, that concavity in front and convexing it back. Mm -hmm. It also takes pressure off the heart and lungs, making it easier to breathe. Good, and lastly from here, raising the head, neck of the occiput, like your head's on a marionette string, there you go. And that elongation of the cervical spine, create length all the way through your back into the tailbone. And the tailbone should be dropping to the ground as the head neck lifts up, making as much room in the spine as you can. There's a phenomenon called the Taiji inch, which is the um, height that a person should gain back if they are elderly and start doing Taiji and increase the distance between the vertebra and their spine. Good, and a few more seconds of this. Excellent, and relax. Shake it out for a second. We'll do internal rotation, just a moment here. Going on a little bit into Shuang P, and then from Shuang P, we'll start talking about the foundation of the movement for Golden Spear, okay? Ready? Mm -hmm. Cool. So for internal rotation, I typically like to use a slightly more narrow stance, and the right size of stance, the stance that feels best for you. So play with the distances between the feet, and find the distance between that allows you to really easily Roll the hip around and in. Because you're starting with one leg again, isolating, and make sure you're rolling all the way around your foot, just like in our keep going. In our warm-up exercise with the feet together and we're rolling around. Now you have a slightly wider stance, we're just doing one leg at a time. Same basic idea. Back of foot, side of foot, front of foot, side, around and around we go. And again, these first few seconds each side just to develop that coordination. We're not worrying about anything else, just that basic movement. Good. It's always a good time for quasas, for qua times, so you can always sink down a little lower and try to feel that movement, pull more deeply through the hips. It also makes it a bit more of a quadricep workout, which is just fundamental strength building for all of Northern Gold Field. Good, changing to the other leg.
Very nice. Again, making sure you're initiating from the hip, pivoting around the ankle, and the knee is just along for the ride. If you feel you need to pull from the knee to make a complete circle, change something. Either change the depth of your stance, stand up a little more, change the distance between your feet, but find a place where you don't have to initiate anything from your knee. The knee should only ever act as a hinge between the two joints, the hip and the ankle. From here, begin pulling into your figure eight. Just as with single leg, for those first few seconds, don't worry about the other postural elements. Just try to make sure that you're rolling around each part of each foot. Make sure you're moving from your hip, pivoting your ankle, and keeping pressure off of your knees. As you continue, start bringing in that very gentle foot grab. Again, first two toes to heel through that arch lifting. It's easiest to feel for the front, for the front of the leg, that tibialis anterior muscle group. And once that lower leg begins to engage, the quads begin to feel some little bit of a pull right around the knee. Eventually, you can even feel a little bit of pull into the hamstring as you draw around that circle side to side. And just as before, as you sink, make sure you're folding from the hip. See how my hand is right here? This is her ASIS, the very top of her pelvis. This is the very top of her inguinal crease. As I push back just a little, it folds, allowing her to sit down comfortably. I'm giving her a lift through her back, and now she can continue her roll. Feel the difference? Yeah. Yeah. It's leaned more forward. Than... Right, there's a belly drop, and then that'll bring you back to... Okay. Yeah. Cool. Good. Next, adding in the draw of the umbilicus. So from here, the belly draws in. Very nice. The back straightens. The tailbone doesn't tuck. It just sinks down because a weight attacks the very, has the very end of the coccyx. It pulls you to the ground, creating length in that lumbar, those paraspinal muscles. That can make more balance there? Yeah. yeah. See, now you're back to vertical. Right? Yeah. So we've gone. Front, back, we're going to do front again, then back again. So it's all yeah. front, back, front, back. So it's this constant forward, back balancing as you have these elements going vertical. Next up is knitting of the clavicle, which again is more, in some ways, more felt by that splaying of the scapula, the scapula, those flat bones behind the shoulder. And so those scapulas splay, splay and the shoulders stay sunk. The clavicle knits ever so slightly, and it's a matter of just a couple millimeters. It's not a big movement, but it's enough to give you space to breathe. Right. And lastly, the raising of the, of the cervical vertebra at the head and neck. And what I'm doing to her head is I'm placing my thumb and forefinger right at the base of her skull and lifting ever so slightly. That way the chin doesn't pop up. It creates a pure lift through the vertebra. You can also put one finger on the chin to make sure everything is just drawing straight up. And as you lift, Ideally, you'll feel just a little bit of lengthening through the mid-back, the thoracic spine, and that's a good indication that stretch is starting to permeate downwards. If that stretch is reaching the mid-thoracic and the tailbone is dropping, you'll start to get that traction through the middle and get that top-down lift that we're trying to achieve. It takes a while to make space in the spine, but that's why every day we go over the exact same checklist to get more and more comfortable with where, this, you know, where these movements can come from and how to better embody them in your own structures. Uh, 15 more seconds of this. If you haven't tried to sink your weight a little, try to sink your weight. Again, if I'm right next to Rachel, my hands are my hips, and I sit. I want to feel my tailbone drops to the ground, not tuck under my weight, just sink straight down. As that tailbone sinks, now that traction at the back of the head can pay a bit more as it opens up the spine, giving me that space to roll. Very nice. Relax for a second, bringing the feet together, hands on the knees. 
And let's do six rolls in each direction, nice and slow rolls. Make sure your body is rolling all the way around the knees. There you go. Use the weight of your upper body to help the legs to open. Again, you're initiating from your hips, pivoting around your ankles, and your knees are just along for the ride. So make sure they're tracking well as you roll through. One more. Okay. <laughs> you caught up, you're great. Cool. And other way. As you change directions, I recommend starting with a slightly smaller circle, building the amplitude of the circle as you get comfortable and feel where your body is today. There are days your knees will really want to move and days your knees feel kind of stiff. It's good to know which kind of day it is before you get too deep into your practice. One more. Good, then back from neutral, forward, open, around and back. Same thing, rolling the body, rolling the weight around the legs, helping those joints to track as you do. I think going to six, that's what you're doing. One more. All right. And then back. And then changing directions. Two more. Five. And six. Very nice, everyone. So before we get back into the leg mechanics of Schwang-P, let's do a bit of work with the arms. So again, I'll get in a field here in a second. The game we're playing with here is how to lift from the hips, rotate the shoulder, and slice. And so the movement as we cut is both little finger sides forward. There's a stretch to the fingertips. It's not passive, relaxed fingers that we're reaching a little. And again, my arm isn't locked, but it's stretching. So if you put your non-far hand on your side body, right here in your ribs, if your hand's too far in here, you can feel those ribs, those costal muscles in your lap, but it's not very engaged. As you stretch out from the fingers, you'll feel that muscle come more and more online. And there's a point where it feels nice and taut right before the elbow locks out. This is locked out, this is optimal. It's just a couple of degrees of difference. You'll feel that muscle engage, and you want to carry that muscle with you as you slice. Let's try one side a couple of times, just play with that drop, feel that engagement, mostly with your lats. Um, the costal muscles in the belly eventually come into play, but the lats are the easiest muscle to feel first, so they're a great place to start. And again, just rocking up and down, feel those lats engage, and Rachel, you take over the camera and I'll help folks on the screen. So as Rachel reaches out, if your arm locks, see in there, there's not much sensation there, right? But pull your hand in. You feel that? Yeah. Maintain the same thing like I'm pulling your hand as you slice down. There. I definitely lose it as I get to the front though. Right, and so that's why you want to pivot from your hips. And so, man, yeah. a mistake that a lot of people make in this is they swing from the shoulder, right? The shoulder is a lousy lever. You want to swing from your hips. And so as I move through, this might look like a shoulder movement, but as Rachel can attest, my whole body is swinging. And put your hand on my shoulder, make it so everyone can see. This one? Just squeeze it. Is there any shoulder movement? <laughs> no. None whatsoever. My body's moving through. Yeah. My shoulder is fairly fixed, right? There's a bit, there's a lot of shoulder in the float. There's shoulder in the twist, but in the drop, that's not a shoulder movement. That's a side body and hip movement. Okay. Good. Awesome. But it's also a descending side body. So there's up to opposite hip. Up to opposite hip. Feel a bit different? Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. And this is a movement, so everyone can see, if she had my, if I have her arm, right, and if I would do something to her arm, and I move my shoulder, be strong. I can't get her much here, right? But if I move my hip, oh, jeepers. right down she goes. And so again, <laughs> we always want to move from our strongest base, from our strongest point of influence. And in Chinese Gung Fu, it's usually the hips. Is there a couple more slices on that one side? Good. Feel that roll of the waist. And you can see how those figure eights become the space you're using to create that movement. It's not an arm movement, it's a hip movement that's disguised as an arm movement. Very nice. And the other side, just a couple isolations. Again, as we start off, I pull her hand. I'm doing this so she can feel her side body engage. Now that she has that feeling in her body, she can move. And try to maintain that feeling of that resistance of pulling against me. You feel that difference there? Yeah, that's awesome. Good. 
Good, Joanna. Good. It's always nice to spot check. And if the lats are engaged, that's a really good sign that you can roll through. Good. Shoulder to hip. Very nice. Kira, make sure there's a descending motion as you roll through. There you go. Good. Shoulder to hip. Shoulder to hip. Very nice. Good, April. That's looking great. Very nice, Laura. Good, Galen. Very nice, Pam and Craig. So that's just thumbs up or thumbs down. Is that stretch the arms feeling a little bit more sensical? Is that making some more sense? Any questions so far? Not yet? Great. So let's go into the lift. The float, I think, is the trickiest part. And the float is when the hands rise up here. There's a gravity assist as you drop down. You know, it's a matter of where we're pivoting from, but it's a pretty easy movement. Our gravity's on our side. In the lift, we're using our belly and rolling off the belly to raise the arms. And that is a very complex movement. To go from here to here takes a lot of deep coordination. And to kind of get that, you sort of need to fake it until you make it. There's a lot of kind of approximating it until these connections come online. There are tricks that make it more expedient, but a lot of it's trial and error is everyone's body's a little bit different. Some things that do help across the board though, are basic shapes. As I lift, I'm lifting a barrel, right? So you can see as I come here, it's not an oval. Here it's barrel. If it were oval, the shoulder would be back. I'd have less runway to slice. I want all the runway I can get, so I raise in a barrel. As I turn, see I reach out with that far arm, and that turns it from barrel to great big oval, right? In my mind, this is still an arc. This isn't a straight line, and it's going to follow that arc as it sinks. So I raise in the barrel, I stretch to the oval, and then with that side body engagement, I slice to the hip. And now here, see I'm over, it would be for you all your right side. I raise that barrel to the right. As my turn, I stretch to that oval, and the oval drops down. Barrel, oval, slice. Barrel, oval, slice. I'm going to reach back in to guide through that. So just don't about the hips, yeah, just play with the left. Okay. So barrel, oval, slice. Barrel, oval. Oh, the left there, Yeah. Barrel. There you go. I lost that one. You got barrel, barrel oval, oval, slice, barrel, oval. Good. Do it better? Yeah. Awesome. Barrel, oval, slice, lift the barrel, turn the barrel to an oval, and slice to the hip. <laughs> Good. A few more of these. Everyone's looking very, very nice. And for April, as you lift, feel that turn. So again, as the hip, as the right hip turns out, that left arm turns to straight. So lift, stretch through. Lift, stretch. There you go. Good, good. Awesome. April, you've been a wonderful guinea pig. I cannot teach this to everybody else. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so as we begin to integrate the hips with you. <laughs> yes? Oh, no, it's just that some pieces of this are extremely familiar to me. And so it, once you, the turn, once you pointed it out, was, was really familiar to me. Awesome. You, you, you do it all the time. It's just a matter of integrating it with a new movement, right? And it's, just, it's, it's like there's the same kind of robot base for all of us who are stacking new information on top of it. Once that base is there, that's the driving motor for so much of what we do. Yes. First yeah. you have to build the Legos. Exactly. The Lego, the, the Lego analogy always holds. <laughs> and so I was just showing Rachel, um, April on Rachel now. So lift the barrel. So if Rachel holds the barrel, notice how the near hip, the hip near the barrel is turned out, right? The hip far from the barrel is turned in. So by out, I mean there's a little bit of space in that hip. There's a lot of closing in that hip. Right? If she wants to turn her arm straight, she has two options. She can initiate either from her hips or from her arms. We want her to initiate from her hips because that's going to create more of a pull as she slices down. And so from here, she's going to turn this hip out, and that's going to turn this shoulder. Back to barrel. Hip first, shoulder second. There, and again, hip draws the shoulder. Good. And then she can slice down. So barrel, stretch from the hip, and then slice across. Barrel. Pull the hip, then the reach, then the slice. Barrel, pull the hip, 
that creates the reach and the slice. Good. So keep playing with that for a second. In Chinese Gong Fu, as well as in Chinese medicine, there are correlations between joints in the upper and lower body, the wrists to the ankles, elbows to knees, and shoulders to hips. And so every time you can coordinate an upper body movement, especially a shoulder movement with the hip, you're essentially increasing the amount of body movement and you know, um, kinetic draw between those two structures and making your slice more. Good. So everyone keep playing with this for a moment. Lift, hip pulls, good. And watch me for a quick second. So as I'm here, that hip pulls. If I go slow, see how that hip pulling draws my palm to palm up. It draws the oval. So I'm here to create that change in shape in the top. I first create it in the bottom. The hip pulls. The hip draws the shoulder. And see, now I have this really comfortable line to slice through. I lift. The hip draws. The hip pulls the shoulder, and that hip draw also creates the angle that I'll then slice through. I lift, the hip pulls, and now I have my angle to cut. Good. Barrel, oval, slice. Very nice, Laura. Good body coordination, Laura. That's looking great. Don't worry. <laughs> Compliments always mess people up, and I do apologize for that. Good, Joanna. So the body feel that we're after here is the hip creates almost like a line of stretch, cross body, that pulls your palm, the palm up, and then enables it to slice down. The hip pull draws that hand to stretch, and then gives a vector. Very nice. It's that same vector that turns the arm that then carries it down. Does that make sense? Cool. Very good, Pam. That coordination is coming. Good, Kira. There's the oval. There's the, there you go. There you go, very nice, Kira. Use the hip to pull the hand, yep, awesome. Keep playing with that. Very good, Galen and Galen, as you warm up more, as you warm up more, more okay. yep. work on sinking down a little bit so you can use that wider stance to get a bigger draw cross body as you cut. Lift, turn, slice. Lift, hip turns, pulling the hand to slice. Okay. I'm trying to figure out the coordination between the side lift and the hips. And I think it's like just as you're coming to having your full weight over the hip, mm -hmm. lifting up. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. And when we add that hip as a motor in a second, it'll start to make a lot more sense. I was to make sure the mechanics of the body were clear first. Thanks. Yeah, of course. Okay, everyone. Any questions thus far on the slicing? Feeling pretty okay? Now let's bridge the top to the bottom in one final movement, and then we'll go on to the golden spear. All right. So before I let Rachel come in here, we have our internal rotation base, right? And we have our slicing top. And so if I have no, so right now it looks like I'm doing the full movement, but as Rachel can attest, everything's coming from my shoulders. Yeah, it's just floppy. And there's nothing moving through my middle. And I'll turn sideways, it's easier to kind of kind of flopping about here. And so this looks well enough but there's absolutely no draw. The idea of this isn't to fancy swing our arms, our hips wiggling. The idea is to pull from our hips and those lines of force draw through our body and pull the arms in time. Notice now as I bring the belly in that stretch in, the coordination comes a lot deeper. Notice how my whole torso is pivoting with that roll. The turn of my hip pulls my hand. The drilling over my near leg gives me space as I slice far. Again, I turn. There's not space over that far leg as I slice down. And as I begin with this, the body feel is mostly in the shoulders and you know in the back. As I play more and more and engage that belly button, after a bit of time, it just feels like I'm rounding a ball in my stomach. Both the hip movement and the arm movement are rounding that exact same sphere. All of this is kind of tangential and secondary.
So as Rachel comes back in, she's going to start all off with an internally rotating figure eight in the hips. We're going to start with the base because the base is the motor and the legs lead the arms. It's in this movement, it's legs first, then middle, then arms we start out. Does everyone get comfy with their internal rotation? Very nice. Make sure your stance is a little wider so you can feel that draw hip to hip. Good. Before we bring the arms in, start to imagine where the arms would lift. Okay? And you can do this with your hands on your pelvis and feel where the hip lifts. Remember, the hips lead the arms. The hip is going to lift just a fraction of a moment before the arms lift off of it. Okay? So that's where you're going to lift your barrel. You can also feel it's where the hip sinks. Where the hip sinks, that's what you're going to be slicing into. That's the concavity that gives you that clear runway as you slice down. So that rise and that fall are the two most important points as you start this out. I see Rachel's gotten her rise down. And now what she's going to do is practice rising, rising, rising. It's like a cheap version of Michael Jackson's Thriller. <laughs> Play with just that lift. The hip lifts, the arms follow in a wave. So it's waving side to side off of that raise. And notice how that natural fall is pretty much exactly in time with where our slice for our double splitting, where our schwang pi is very soon going to fill. So now she's going to slow down a little. And she's going to pay attention to that turning of the hip. There's a rise, then there's a turn. That turn is where we go from barrel to oval. And so as that hip turns, right, so take your time. Slow down a little bit. Find your rise first. In no rush. There you go. And slow down a little bit more. There. When it's really coordinated, that's it, good. So she rises off the lift, she turns from the pull, and she slices across body. Rises from the lift, turns from the pull, slices cross body. And if you're struggling with a piece of this, don't worry. If you're playing with that lift to lift, that's a great place to be. There's plenty of time to get into the slice later on. If you can get that coordination of lifting off your hip, that is a huge and very challenging step. Good, Joanna. So again, when you feel the hips, there's that moment right here as I'm rounding forward, the hip lifts up, the hands raise off of that lift, and then slice in. Now I see your left hip raises, the hands rise off, turn there. Very nice. Good, Pam. Make sure your fingertips, Pam, are stretching in both hands as you slice. The hands are heavy, raising up, relaxed. As they turn, they turn to reach, and you maintain that blade, that stretch coming through. Good body turn, Galen. Very nice, April and Kira. Good, Laura and Joanna, wonderful. You're all doing really, really well with this. As you get comfortable and your legs strengthen, again, you can deepen that stance a little. The more you deepen into it, the easier it is to feel the opening and closing of that inguinal, of that qua. The qua movement is like the action potential of all gong fu, all power passes through the qua and requires either an opening and closing of that to kind of repel it along its way. And so the more you can become comfortable with that opening and closing of your hip, that becomes a vital bit of kind of your felt sensation that can then translate into every other part of your movement. Good, and just a few more seconds of this. You're all doing great. Wonderful, everyone, and relax for a moment. So really quick, if I borrow Rachel, before we do our knee circles, if Rachel is pushing in at me, there's a pushing up, hunting a little less aggressive, and move it forward, good. And I try a straight shoulder roll through this, I'm strong, but she can push through. If I roll from my belly, oh. there's nothing. Mm -hmm. Again, straight arm, being as strong as I can. I can move her because I'm huge, but I can't move her well. And you see my hips are fixed there. Again, the push is in. I take that roll back. I throw out into my hips, okay. and all of a sudden, she's gone, and it's effortless, right? A power that you can take from the hips and accelerate up 
is in many ways exponentially more than the power isolated of the upper body. So this kind of coordination that feels repetitive and kind of silly at first really is the key to all of those applications off of a push. I push her in, it's not my shoulder taking it, it's my hip. But the hip isn't fixed, the hip is rolling to a different phase. And if you have that kind of movement embodied, there's really no limit to the directions that you can take it into. That's sense? Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Any questions about Dragonster's Earth or where we're taking it to thus far? You all feeling pretty okay? Excellent, nice work everyone. Good, good progress. Get a quick sip of water and we'll do some Golden Spear to finish out. Cool. Mm -hmm. It's nice to be able to put hands on you and help adjust. Awesome. Yeah. I'm glad that's helping. Yeah, is it helping you a little bit? It is, yes. Cool. <laughs> I hope it's helping them. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think seeing the adjustments is good for them so they can then kind of get an idea of what I'd be doing to, you know, mm -hmm. bodies if I could actually make content and murder people. That is looking really good, April. That's another classic example of Dragon Stirs Earth. And then from there, you can go in that Bagua guard to stretch and turn. And so there's that push to reach, right? And then from here, you see how what would be your left hand is outreach, but what would be your right hand presses in. That creates that drill to twist and brings the whole spine into the picture. Very good, April. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you work out the overtime, that's a great, great beginning to that move. It's looking solid. So for Golden Spear, move it up a little bit, and, and I will be careful because I have to be, <laughs> right? So what we're going to play with first is a roll to press, roll to press. And so you can see more easily, I'm now one hand lead, other hand lead. So I'm rolling through, changing leads each time. But the configuration is the same. One fist is forward, the other fist is gently pushing in to the ulnar side of that top fist, kind of supporting it. If I were to borrow Rachel for a second, she's pushing on my hands. If I have one hand unsupported again, I can use my strength, but just half my body and see how I can't even track it very well. I bring that other hand in even lightly, as long as I can complete the circuit, and now I can feel my feet. And now as I push through, all that force draws right into her. So it's really good to have that connection. A uh, quick little side note, grappling is the same thing. If Rachel's trying to control my arm here and move it around, she can do a lot. As soon as I touch my side body, now it's fixed into my feet, and all of a sudden I have a very different route. And so completing that circuit between the arms and the arms of the torso is a really valuable trick to maintaining your space, maintaining the continuity of your own structure. And so again, to start out with, roll to press, roll to press, changing leads. Good, and just play with that movement. Open hands, creating fists as the hands press, and pushing through. Notice how I'm not trying to make this as narrow a space as possible. I'm trying to keep it into a nice medium chevron as I push forward. That chevron kind of spear shape means I can draw all the musculature of my side body ultimately into this press, which is the goal. It's not just an arm thing, it's an all of you thing. Good, a few more times through. I'll add in some new elements to it. As you play with this, make sure your basic postural elements are still online. Again, those are the foot grab, the umbilical draw, and in this case, most importantly, the knitting of the clavicles, splaying of the scapula, and raising of the head and neck at the occiput. And so obviously, this isn't a martial movement. This is too big to be a martial movement. This is a fishing movement. And by fishing, I mean, as we roll through, I'm fishing to bring as many structures in my body online, take part of this movement as I can. The opposite of what is good is a pure shoulder movement. Ideally, it's equal between my front and my back. Both halves of my body are reaching, my side body is engaged, and I want to feel muscles all throughout my torso engaged in this press. Okay? And that can be, there you go, good Joanna. And what Joanna just did is wonderful. The way that you achieve this is that as the hands go forward, the back goes back. And so I'm fishing, trying to hook on as many structures as I can. And see from here, as my elbows pass my side body, my back is going back, my fists are going forward, and then I soften and relax. relax. It's a catch and release. Catching all the tissues I can into my press. Yep, relaxing, going back. Thank you. Good. Softening as you reach. And then as Rachel rolls through and presses, if she has her side body in line, I become light. Now, Rachel's missing here. 
is this. And so you can actually almost tickle yourself a little bit. You can take your own hand and kind of pinch that lat a little bit. And then, yep, so she pushes through. I get a little bit of a lat pinch. Find the ground there, and now I've got nothing on her. Shake it up and try that flat pinch. And see, now <laughs> I'm pushing her back. But again, I engage that side body. The side is the bridge between the front and the back. The side is online. You can use that to link into the belly and the back, getting both of those halves to work in unison. And before you know it, the whole body begins to roll and respond. Again, there aren't any fast tracks to good Kung Fu movements because the coordination takes time to understand. But through repetition and basic practice, you can pretty rapidly get a, you know, a substantial understanding of what's happening in your body and how to wield it. Good. Open hand, because again, the process of making a fist, that clench will draw in other structures. So relaxed everything, press everything. Relaxed everything, press everything. Inhale as you open, exhale as you press. Inhaling is a tensing process. Exhalation is a relaxing process. You always want to push through an exhalation. Very nice, Laura. Laura, make sure your shoulders stay down as you roll. So see, my shoulders are low and they stay low as I roll through. The shoulders are always low. My shoulders raise up. It's virtually impossible to feel those lats engaged. You need to have that kind of knit concavity in the front as a precursor to the rest of the movement. Very nice, Laura. Good, Galen. And Galen, it's okay to sit down a little as you press out, raising everything lifts together, sitting down on a big stool as you press out. Okay, I'm trying to um, disambiguate, like, bending the bow from bending my back. Sure. And there's going to be a little bit of bending your back. What saves you from collapsing your spine is that raising of the head neck. Okay. And so the head neck raising up, the back will bow, but because there's theoretically a more fixed point on top, it can only bow within a certain range. Uh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, that helps. Thank you. you. If you bow too much, here, I'm bowing way too much. I'm also not raising my head neck, right? If I maintain that lift, that's about as far as I can go while maintaining a good cervical feel. There you go. Very nice, Galen. That's the idea. That's the idea. Thank you. Yeah, nicely done. Good belly movement, April. Try to feel, so April, take your arms like this, and almost like an elongated chicken dance, <laughs> try to feel the lats engage as you flap your wings, and then carry the lats through. Let the side body be your guide as you reach forward, there, as you reach forward through. Very nice, very nice. Good, Joanna. Yep, feel those lats and then draw, there, very, that's a good punch. Yeah, we can definitely build on that. Very good, Pam and Craig. Everyone's making good progress in this one. Everyone try four more, two more on each side, and shake it out for a second. Workout, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. And the training tool for this one is, of course, a giant steel chain, because why wouldn't it be? As you raise up, then carrying that chain through to the reach, feeling the weight as you lift back up, drawing through the reach. Elastic sarabands also work, but steel chain is the kind of Chinese traditional. My base is full of awesome toys. All right, any questions so far? Is that making some sense? Is anyone feeling stuck in their shoulders? I just have a weird popping and grinding happening in one shoulder for some reason. And that kind of crepitus, um, is that your dominant arm? Yes. Very, very common as things kind of open up and loosen. What I'd recommend after class is doing the 50 arm circles each side to get a little more space in there. And so be a combination of kind of pulling and drawing and then relaxing and opening. And over time, that should yield a really good result. 
And if it works as that, let me know. I'll give you some new things to play with. Thank you. Of course, yeah. Um, any other questions about shoulder tightness from this or any other region that's not feeling great? Again, you will never offend me by asking me questions about things that aren't feeling good. There are always ways you can change the posture, and it's hard for me to see all of your posture over Zoom. So it helps me to hear, you know, what's happening in all of your bodies as we work. I'm feeling like my shoulders raised when I come back up to here. Like I lose the neck. So right. And so you see how I maintain that round as I lift? There you go. And then maintain that round. Yeah, that's it. Then I feel like there's less of a push at the end. Yeah. Well, it's, the thing is, it's not a big push. It isn't a big hit. This is a sharp hit, right? There aren't many strikes in, in um, Pai G that have a big long reach. Pouchway has them because Pouchway draws in the middle and explodes out and you get those long big reaches. In Tai Chi, everything is handled fairly close into your center, right? Usually elbow distance or closer. Because you want to make sure you have that roll of that base to absolutely control what's coming in and going back out. Does that make sense? Yeah. Awesome, awesome. So to finish up, let's do a little bit of work with the step of Golden Spear. Watching me first, to the same reach in for this one. So I'm just going to do a lift. If my right hand is in my front hand, my left leg is going to then step back. So it's opposite hand to foot. I'm going to bring that foot back. And notice how my heel's off the ground. As the heel sinks and presses, the arm reaches. So from here, there's a bridge from fist to back foot. I can then draw back up more to the front, sinking back to press lifting, sinking to press. And now, as I have that back foot to guide, I can begin to get more of that belly feel on mine. It's harder to feel the belly here with feet 50-50. Once you come into more of that forward stance, it's much easier to kind of roll that belly into the picture as you press forward. Again, the hands hit their end point of movement forward as the heel pushes and significantly presses into the ground. So we're gonna have a cross body timing, hand to foot. So as Rachel began, she's up on her toe, that back foot, good. And she rolls the press, that heel comes down. Straighten that leg. Good. The leg isn't locked out, the leg is straight. Ideally, there we go. <laughs> With a reach from the front hand to that back foot. And so as I put pressure on her outstretched hand, I want her to feel that in her back leg. You feel that? Yeah. Raise the arms back up. Use the same hand as you press forward, try to put it to that back hip. <laughs> there you go, don't rush it. Even press. So you rush that leg a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Relax, don't worry. Move from the belly. There it is, good. And so as she coordinates the hand and the foot to move together evenly forward and back, it's like there's an expansion from her belly, pressing evenly to the outstretched hand as into that back foot. That even expansion, means she's now pushing from her center and not overextending her thrust. That makes her a lot more power. It's like in fencing, if you reach too far, you're clumsy and off balance, you always wanna be attacking from a place where you can then instantly retreat if you needed to. The same thing in Gong Fu. You always wanna attack from the middle, both sides expanding out in an equal pace. Good, Joanna. So that back leg. See how I'm slightly, I'm moving from the middle, that back leg's a little more straight. And so I raise up, vertical posture, sink, to reach. Raise up, more vertical posture, sink as I reach. Very nice. Again, not quite locked out, but definitely more straight in the back leg than the front. It's much easier when you time it with the breath. Inhale to lift, exhale to gather and press. There you go. Inhale to lift, Exhale, good April. In April, you don't need the elbows to go that far. Here is enough. Here, they're gonna get too deep into the front of the shoulder. So again, a little bit more of an angle will be helpful as you push through. Thank you, I have a problem with overextension. It's, it's a hard thing to fix. Um, one day if we can ever do sparring again, you're ever comfortable with that, it makes a big difference. You can see exactly why overextension becomes you know, a hazard. And it's really easy to correct from their point, that point. Sort of. I need to stop thinking that I can go farther than I can actually go. <laughs> totally. I think maybe I think my arms are as long as your arms. And, uh, <laughs> the only one here who has longer arms than me is Craig. <laughs> <laughs> Good. And changing sides just a couple more before we finish class. Again, yeah. Starting off nice and slow, gather to press. 
Good. Using that heel, heel press in time with the hand press. And again, you try to coordinate it on the fly. It's quite challenging. If you coordinate with the breath, the breath becomes the guiding pulse. It's much easier to feel. Do you see that? Yeah. That's looking great, Laura. Very nice timing. Good. And then Laura, slow it down just a little. Slow exhalation. So you can feel all those muscle groups come online for the press. Relaxed inhale. Slow exhalation, drawing as many structures into your... There. Good. That's great. The benefit of slow practice isn't that we fight slow. It's, again, that helps us to organize our body better so that when we move fast, all those pieces go along with us. Good, opens hands you raise. Very nice arm angle, Craig. You're doing much better not touching the elbows because we want that little bit of space. Good, good. Great, Joanna. And Joanna, try not to pop at the end. Try to have it be one consistent roll through. Good, very nice, very nice. In a couple of weeks, I'll teach you how to make a pop out of this. It'll be much more interesting than just a little bit of a fast move in the end. Good. Good, Galen and April. Good, Kira. Everyone's making good progress on this one. Okay, we're going to do three more, and then we will close things out. All right and relax. Thank you so much, Rachel, for being the body and demonstrator today. <laughs> because of her, we could have class, so deeply appreciate it. Awesome. Um, my, my back is in good shape. I had everything reset today, so I'll be hopefully good to train, you know, better power tomorrow and full speed by Saturday. Um, that's like my body a chance to, you know, not end up permanently damaged. Right? Great, great job, Rachel. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks. Thank